Oops, I forgot to plug the microphone in. Uh, oops. <laughs> I think this is working now. We just got home uh, after Jeremy. It's uh, now uh, <clears throat> what have we got? nine o'clock here, so we're two hours late. <clears throat> but it was good to see Jeremy, and uh, he's uh, pretty settled in Hobart, and we'll a bit more on that in a minute. Uh, fleet's all looking good, no big storms above the orange zones and uh, uh, everyone's making pretty good progress except for Ian Herbert Jones right here but we'll uh, have a look at that in a minute. So we'll um, go straight into uh, uh, straight into Elliot and Guy coming across here. Now these times are still exactly the same as if we had been doing this at uh, 7 o'clock in Hobart or um, 9 o'clock in France so that means uh, it must be 11 o'clock in France now. Um, but the positions are actually for 0800 UTC every four hours as per usual. So you see a big high pressure system. Yesterday it was suggesting both Elliot and Guy are going to make good progress, and they are. Uh, Elliot's doing 4.7 knots, heading straight for Fremantle. Guy still below the line, but he's doing 7.9 knots, really flying. Uh, enjoying that. Um, still don't know why he's down the line. He just likes being a radical, I think, <laughs> having a bit of fun. So um, so anyway, but it's not far. He's only 30, 40 miles below it. And uh, if we look at a uh, quick one here going forward, uh, 24 hours, same thing. Guy's got pretty much the same weather, doing okay. Elliot's got good breeze, so that's okay. They'll uh, get a good run there. And if we come forward now, into uh, the 18th, which is the next one. Same again, Elliot's got good breeze. Uh, Guy's gonna go a, bit, a little bit quiet, but still doing okay. And uh, we'll just have to peak one more. Uh, here we go, so this is day three. Elliot's still got breeze and Guy's got into an even better system going northwest, so it'll flatten out a bit. Uh, he might get a little bit of cloud cover, but yeah, they're all, both of them are pretty settled for the next three days. Now for Elliot, again, if we look at uh, his distance now, if I put that back to today's weather, give you a distance for an approximate EDA. He's pretty pretty convinced that he'll do um, uh, 100 mile days. So let's see, he's, he's 230. So today's uh, local time Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I think it'll be in sometime Thursday. Um, pretty, you know, maybe Thursday afternoon, something like that. Uh, we're just dealing with the entry with customs, quarantine, border force and all that sort of stuff, giving them an alert for Elliot arriving and we're still uh, not got confirmation but uh, we know there'll be at least one member of his team, I won't mention names, that'll be there. So we're hoping to get a, a good interview from him when he arrives. We'll all look forward to seeing that and see uh, how he's feeling and, and have a look at the boat and so on. So that's pretty cool. Okay, uh, Sir Robert Knox Johnson going up very high. It's interesting to watch their track again right up here in the bite. Uh, so um, keeping out of the extreme weather, you might say. Um, okay, back to uh, the activity of the day. And uh, I took a call from Ian uh, this afternoon while we were waiting for, uh, for Jeremy. And he uh, just wanted to know about how long he can stay once he crosses the line and uh, it looks like he's once he get into, gets into the film gate he'll pick up the mooring and stay there for at least a couple of days, get the boat sorted, uh, have a bit of a relax, catch up on everything, uh, get himself organised for the next, uh, next leg of the GGR. So unfortunately he um, went through a slight quiet period and now he's got these uh, north northeasterly headwinds for him but it was interesting to look at the track here he's not making any any progress forward at all this is probably blowing about uh, 27 gusting 30 35 maybe you know 25 gusting 35 and a bit um, not extreme but it's a plenty of breeze and he's probably got let's have a look at the sea he's probably got three three and a bit meter sea there uh, yeah that's a good good uh, I'll get rid of that um, yeah, he's into threes and fours, so there's four metres C, but he's just basically going back and forwards. He said on the phone uh, he wasn't making much headway and it might take him a couple of days, so uh, we'll have to see how that works out. But for now, uh, not a big storm, just uh, right on the nose, right from where he wants to go. So how far is he from, uh, from his destination? Let's bring this down here. Uh, I'll shrink this back one more so we can see what's going on. Uh, he's pretty much on the wrong rum line, but he's 90 degrees to it at the moment. So there's uh, 37, and he's got another 37. So you know, up to 75 miles. It's only 75 miles there, but it's right on the nose. 
Um, and it's a bit hard for him to squeak in close to the coast and sneak along in here in the calm weather at night time. So uh, we might see him late tomorrow night. It's not far if it goes, but oh, let's look at the weather first, see what the weather's going to do. That'll give us the answer. Um, that sounds like a plan. So if we come forward until midnight tonight, it's going to lighten off a bit. That's the first thing. So we have light headwinds right on the nose. That's not good for progress. Um, and then by tomorrow morning, it's going to change, but then there's a calm. <laughs> okay, so by then he'll get underway. He'll be in here by tomorrow morning sort of thing. Uh, hang on. No, this is tomorrow night. 7, 16, 17. Yeah, that's tomorrow. Uh, no, tomorrow morning. So, it's yeah, it's going to take him a while because he, although he has the ability to motor, okay, his motor is working. So let's just see what we've got here. Yeah, it's a little bit fluky all over the place. Now it's turning around, going the other way. So, um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting. Maybe tomorrow night. So anyway, we'll update the, uh, and then there's a big following south southwesterly there. So yeah, we'll we'll update the ETA tomorrow morning, and um, uh, you can follow that through from there. Anyway, he's perfectly happy. And where's Jeremy right now? I'll show you exactly where he is. He's right up where they parked the the Sydney Hobart Yacht Race winners right up here in town. So came in. We met him out here in the dinghy. It's quite a few miles. We got a bit wet and all the rest of it. But anyway, uh, fortunately, he was able to sail. So we gave him a. Uh, and in fact, you can't see it there because it's perfectly green. But we gave him a dispensation uh, because the wind was um, on a lee shore and uh, he's declared uh, Chichester class and he's got no competitive gain with any of that. So we let him turn the corner here and we didn't turn him right into the coast because the, the sea breeze was blowing right onto it. And uh, it could have, and he had no motor and it was a bit much for our dinghy. We've only got a 70 horsepower on it. So we let him cut the corner here and he came up right around the corner and right now he's right here, right in the middle of uh, Constitution Dock or just at the entrance to that. So uh, if you've seen the live, we had a, a hiccup there. There's some sort of interference with the signal. So it wasn't going out, but it finally loaded and he'll be there probably for three or four days maybe. He's going to uh, uh, talk to some people and overpaint the copper coat with Andy Fowling. Uh, get some food on board, uh, sort out the starter motor. There's some sort of a electrical short on the engine, not allowed to start it, so you'll sort that. Uh, get some good, some more good fresh food and uh, some more books, and then he'll be on his way again. But uh, today he's pretty much waiting for... He can't get off the boat, unfortunately. He's um, uh, stuck. We didn't get in until late. We didn't get in there till after 7. So Customs Quarantine are now off for the day. They'll be back tomorrow morning. So he's trapped on board on the marina. Uh, and can't take anything off the boat, put anything on the boat, no one can touch him, all that sort of stuff. So he'll get that done tomorrow, and then we'll go down and pick him up in another boat and bring him back to the club and slip the boat there at the uh, uh, Royal Yacht Club of Tasmania. So that's Jeremy's story. He's quite looking forward, actually, to uh, uh, to heading off on the next leg refreshed. You know, he, he's come to terms with the reality of going into Chichester class, and uh, uh, he's going to have fun. You know, he's, he's going to have a fresh start and um, get underway, and... And uh, he reckons about 109 or 119 days back to Le Sable de Long. So that's uh, Jeremy's story for now. Boat looked really good, but there's quite a few barnacles underneath. We'll get you some pictures when he when he's uh, up on the slip, so you'll see that then. Oh, got to keep going back. Jeez, they that up big. Um, and uh, here we are with Captain Gook. We're back on today's weather. So uh, he's doing... Uh, 5.2 knots and he's done uh, 65 in the last day so not too bad anyway this is as I mentioned uh, last night this is quite good sailing across here now he's got a constant breeze and not headwind so that shouldn't make him too unhappy so I'll just go straight forward on the weather of Gug and just see uh, that's tomorrow morning 24 hours later yeah, he's doing okay. It's going to go a little bit light. This is just opening up here, a little low pressure forming underneath him. And uh, we'll go another day and see what happens then. Oh, there's day in a bit. Okay, so he's got some light sailing, but that'll be pleasant. And he'll still be heading in the right direction, so not too bad. And uh, next one, 19, that's into 16. This is four days ahead nearly. Uh, got some plenty of breeze coming up behind. So, again, no real surprises. Typical Southern Ocean weather, no storms, touch wood. Jeepers, it's going really well. 
Happy about that. I oh, am. Yeah. We're down to five entrants in the GGR now. Ooh, we can't afford to. We've got to make sure we get at least five to match it up for 2018. So, um, and uh, you know, Ian's uh, pondering his situation. And I, when we called, I reminded him that he is uh, uh, going to. Be, well, currently now he's fifth in the GGR. You know, he's not just at the back of the back of the fleet. The back of the fleet have all stopped. And uh, fifth out of 16, that's not a bad achievement. So let's wait and see what happens after he uh, has a couple of days break and sorts his boat out a bit more and dries out and all the rest of it. So, okay, uh, Bernabatessia heading into the no-go zone. Not a good look, but anyway, we'll let him do that. And uh, then we've got um, Simon roaring away out front, uh, 6.9 knots. And he's got a fair bit of breeze there, but it's not a storm as such. It's just solid Southern Ocean weather. It's probably about 30 knots gusting, you know, maybe 40, I suppose. And uh, let's have a look at the seas. He's probably got about five metre seas. Yep, that's a good solid five there, four to five. Um, just typical Southern Ocean, uh, but quite you know, heavy, not storm, but just heavy. Um, Abolish's uh, sea is probably about four to five. And uh, Kirsten's a little bit less. She's uh, running behind there on that one. Let's have a look at the cloud cover just to see what's happening. So mixed clouds for Simon in the southwester. That's normal. Fluffy clouds and the wind always increases underneath the clouds. They can be the size of a city block or a football field, but um, it picks up about 10 to 15 degrees under the clouds versus the, the clear sky. Um, Abolish and Kirsten got clear sky all the way through, so they'll know exactly where they are be getting their um, Meridian Passage just to get your latitude. And they're all a healthy distance from the uh, from the no-go zone. So Avalish uh, making 6.7 knots and 157 in the last 24 hours. Let's look at what Simon did in 24 hours. Uh, whoop, 157, so 149. So Avalish has kept up with him and added 10. Uh, Kirsten is doing 6.1, so he's 0.8 of a knot slower than Avalish. But she has got lighter winds there. If this if this graphic is correct, she's got a little bit less light less wind than than um, Abolish. But 147 versus 100 uh, sorry 144 miles versus 157. So Abolish is the you know doing pretty good on all of this. Um, distance to go. Simon's about uh, two and a half. No, Simon's about three weeks from Cape Horn, by the way. So that's kind of interesting. That three weeks will fly through pretty quick. And uh, the distance there, holding his own. He didn't gain any yet. I thought he might have been, I think I said in the next two to three days, he'll be up to 1,000 miles. But he's got 229 split from, um, from Simon. And Kirsten is uh, near, enough to, uh, near enough to 90 odd miles. So she's lost about 20 miles uh, against Avalish, but that's nothing. They're still having fun. So I'm going to shrink it back a bit so we can see how the, the weather is going to evolve. Um, get rid of this, boom, okay, and we'll now toggle this through. Uh, you can also see on this toggle what's going to happen to uh, Captain Goog if you're looking after him. So uh, let's bring it forward to, uh, to 12 hours. There's 12 hours later. Simon's got a little bit more breeze coming in, but that'll keep him moving. And Kirsten's got the, the calmer areas chasing her up from behind. Captain Goog's still sailing well. Uh, and Simon's just got more of that heavy weather. And this is, oh, this is, where, this is the zone he's going to pick up now. You can see both Kirsten and Abolish are slowing down. Simon keeps sailing. Um, this is where it'll cut that. Two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's 50 miles he's got uh, for free. And uh, wow. It's going to be about, yeah, he'll be 1,050 soon um, and, and less. Goog's doing quite well. He'll keep going, but that's going to impact uh, impacts um, Kirsten and Abolish and Simon's still sailing. Now, will it catch up to uh, Simon? This is right through to the 19th now, 16, 17, 18, 19. Not looking too bad because it looks like it's going to head up now. You can see it's holding there. So Simon's keeping that breeze. By the time he's got this, he's up here in this one. And these guys are going to be waffling along there. So this is going to be a 1,200-mile break. He's going to pick up a couple of hundred miles here in the days ahead. So uh, um, that's life. That's sailing. That's how it happens. Um, and, uh, wow, that's a big one. So, But it's all below the line. Look at that. Ooh, I like seeing that. Um, quite interesting when I was looking at, um, looking at uh, Jeremy's Dodger. It's a fantastic Dodger, and it's still there. <laughs> so... Uh, no big waves have hit it and um, all that sort of stuff. So it's uh, quite a good season to be doing the GGR. Touch wood.